Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Si vous regardez ceci, c'est que vous avez reçu un calendrier de l'avant. Respectez les règles. Joyeux anniversaire. Un calendrier de l'avant. Respecte toutes les règles jusqu'à l'ouverture de la dernière fenêtre, sinon je te tue. Attention T'en avales un, faut les avaler tous. Jésus dit au paralytique qu'il lève-toi et marche. Tu devrais arrêter avec ce calendrier, ça va te rendre dingue. Tu prends bien tes médocs contre tes hallucinations, tout ça Je marche. Je marche. Bon anniversaire. Tu devrais arrêter d'avaler toutes ces saloperies-là. Ton calendrier va exiger d'autres sacrifices. Personne ne devra mourir. Cette nuit, tu me fous la paix. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Pekovic, and this is episode number 390. Releasing on December 2nd exclusively on Shudder is the Advent Calendar a supernatural horror thriller that tells the story of a former dancer turned paraplegic who is gifted an ancient advent calendar that brings with it gifts while demanding sacrifice. A chilling and innovative horror film filled with unexpected twists and great performances. The advent calendar is also the latest film from writer and director Patrick Ridgemont. And I'm happy to say that Patrick joins me now on the podcast. Patrick, I thank you so very much for joining me today. I'll thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure. Well, pleasure's all mine. I love the Advent calendar. It's really interesting reading up about the background of the movie. Your sister-in-law, she is obsessed with Advent calendars. And this obsession kind of led to the idea of the movie that I watched recently. How did her obsession kind of turn into the story that I saw only a couple of days ago? Well, um, you know, um, Talking about the character of uh, Eva, that's the question you're asking me exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, um, you know, I had to find a kind of character who really wants um, a miracle um, because I'm not spoiling the movie, but it's an advent calendar. There are candies in it, and every candy is uh, getting her closer and closer and closer of the 24th of December, and the window is a kind of uh, it's a miracle. It's written in German, uh, Weihnachtswunder. It means uh, miracle of Christmas. And if I have a character who just, you know, have a problem with his boyfriend, well, you know, it's not a miracle to, to get your boyfriend back. Yes, it's a miracle in a romantic comedy, but not in a horror movie. So I had to find someone with a disease or with the handicaps, something, well, you, you have to decide between life or death or being happy or unhappy. Uh, and for me, it was really important to have someone uh, with a, a, a big handicap. And more of that, it's not only being handicap, uh, paraplegic, it's also, uh, you, you, tell it, you told it, it's an, um, a former dancer. So it's not, she doesn't just lose, lost her legs. She lost uh, the way she was communicate, uh, communicating. She was, she was, she lost really another part of herself. So getting her legs back is something really important. So you understand why she becomes that kind of uh, character. Uh, she's really, well, she is um, close to be, um, yeah, she's a psycho in the end. Okay. 
When it came to the advent calendar itself in your movie, how did you come up with the design of the calendar? Because it's a very unique design to it. Yeah, that's a, it's a team of more than 10 person who worked on it. And there are artists. Some of them are, um, I don't know the word in English, they, they're working wood, uh, but mm-hmm. just, not just for a movie, also for people who, who wants a, uh, um, another, uh, well, you can ask them a knife, uh, Japanese style, you can ask them what you want. And when I asked them a calendar, an advent calendar, they, they had so much fun. But it was really hard because the screenplay was not really finished. Yeah, well, it, it was finished. But two weeks before the shooting, things were changing uh, because of uh, the money, because of the time, because of the weather, and because of uh, many, many uh, other problems. Not really problems, but many things. And they had to... To wait, because you know the numbers. Where do I put the, the window number five? Where do I put the window number 22? And, you know, it was um, it, it was uh, really tied with the time. And uh, they had fun. I had fun with that. And that object is really amazing. And now it's, and I'm not joking, it's in a safe uh, in the, my producer <laughs> office. They don't want to lose it. And they told me, okay, if ever we make... Um, a calendar too. We use the same calendar because we are mm. so much in love with it. It's it's sacred now. It's you know I love horror movie with object with sacred uh, uh, object holy object. Oh, I, I love the Necronomicon in Evil Dead. I love the the the, the little um, the cube in Hellraiser. I like yes. when when all the characters are changing, but the object stays. It's always the same. They represent the devil. They represent the evil. They represent many things. And I, I love my Advander calendar. Why is the calendar in German as opposed to being in French? Well, it's in German because when you when I had this idea of uh, doing a movie, and a horror movie about the Advent calendar, I had to feed myself with things that were true, authentic, genuine. And the calendar, the advent calendar, have been created in München, Munich, Germany. That's a German, that's a German story. It's a German invention. They love uh, Christmas market. They love Christmas tale. They love Jesus and God, and uh, they invented the advent calendar. And I, I just have that. Wow, good surprise! It's not from Spain or Italy. It's from Germany. It's scaring. Germany is scaring. So, <laughs> so, you know, if I want to put a monster in my calendar, a German, a German monster is perfect. What about a German, uh, an Italian monster? Well, I can't so far. Well, no, it's, it's less. It's less. Uh, it's less. Uh, well, it's scaring. It's less scaring. But I, I was so happy. And I made so many research. Well, I mean, not so many, not two months, but I, I've been on Wikipedia and I was looking for everything I needed, not just me, but for the the guy who was doing the make to make the monster inside the calendar. So uh, I I told I invented uh, a backstory. I told him that the monster inside the calendar was a next priest, German priest, uh, and he died uh, during World War One with his face, you know, exploded by a bomb. And if you look at my monster. You can see that he's wearing a kind of priest uh, dress. He has a, a, a mask on his face, and that mask is a gas mask from the German army uh, of uh, World War One. So everything makes sense, but you don't see it. Well, you don't have to watch that movie uh, like a blogger say, "Okay, okay, check a uh, German army, check." You don't have, but maybe you have that feeling. And for me, it it, it makes sense. So. I know exactly who is this character inside the calendar. And I know exactly what's the folklore. I don't know if that name exists, but in French we say folklore mm-hmm. uh, okay. of, of this calendar. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been serious. I've been serious. Do you think that backstory of the priest might show up as a, a prequel in the future? Oh, I love it. I adore it. I, I want it. But it's... It's not in my, it's beyond my control. I have producers. I, I have, uh, well, it's, um, it's, um, it's a strange period now. So it, the film is going to be re- released on the 1st of December in France. And the audience is another, is another part of uh, the decision. So if it's, I hope it will work. It's not easy, I hope. And 
um, you know, the decision is not mine. I have to, uh, to um, my producers have to say, okay, we have a, we green light a prequel or the, the, the next movie, but I like to do it. I, I, I adore to do it. I was really in love with this uh, screenplay and the character and the calendar. And I want to write, I want to write well, at least three or four other movies with that. It's a good, 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 good idea. I think so too. I like him. He's a he's a fresh new monster for the horror scene. I think it's it's really impressive. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. In, in the movie, you work with a lot of practical effects. Well, how was that like for you? Have you worked with practical effects like that before? No, it's my first time. And you have to know, well... Um Special effects are really expensive. And when you have that budget, you cannot spend all your budget in the effects. So um, sometimes I had to choose between effects or not. And I, my decision was most of the time was, okay, no effect. I don't want to spend my money all not, not in the effect. I, I want all my money to be, uh, I want all the, mo- the budget to be on screen, but it was not that big. So um, I, we have to make some decision. And I'm so happy of it because sometimes it looks old fashioned. But well, old fashioned is not a good word, but some vintage, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when a door is closing by yourself because uh, something or uh, something is getting into the room. But everybody knows that it's someone on the floor with his foot pushing the door and with a rope opening the door. You, I, we don't have to make digital effects for that. And, and sometimes in the movie, I use this. But it's my movie is like an advent calendar. You have, it's, all scenes are really different. Sometimes we have special effects. Wow, there's smoke on this lake, on this, uh, well, kind of on the water, and something is growing up. So this is really effects. But sometimes the door are closing just by yourself, by itself. So it's not really expensive. And uh, well, we have to uh, make a, a movie with uh, 24 windows because there are 24 windows in the calendar and 24 scenes and 24 kind of effects. And sometimes the special effects are just the way people that my comedians are playing. Oh, well, I'm sorry, because this is my maybe you can hear him. It's my baby boy. And uh, yeah. maybe it's a little bit scary. He's not scared. He's scared. He's scared. Yeah, he's scary and scared. Mm, my my Damien la malédiction. Mm-hmm. My 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 boys' names are Michael and Gabriel. Gabriel are oh, like the angel. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so you know there. Uh, in my dream, when I was a teenager, I, I was I was I was talking alone in English, uh, thinking that one day I have interviews and. Uh, that day happens for me. It's a kind of uh, it's a kind of miracle too. Uh, it's a Santa, it's a Christmas miracle in uh, before December. And yes. uh, <laughs> well, the, the nice thing you just said before, uh, well, as an introduction, it, it I was happy to hear that in English because 
Maybe you notice it, that movie, the calendar, the advent calendar is not really a French movie. It's not the, the movie you used to see with people talking about their problems or with family, uh, with uh, just comedies. And I wanted to make a film who looks like a US or English movie, you know, like a Hollywood movie. I don't know. Okay. Ah, okay. Now I know what he wants. He just wanted his truck. No, uh -huh. his truck. Okay. And... Uh, When I saw there, there was on the, um, I saw on the internet my my trailer was on the internet in French, and someone wrote as a comment. He said, "Wow, the movie looks great, but the French voices they choose, bah." So for <laughs> someone for French people because all my all my comedians are unknown. So that guy thought it was from. America, Australia, England, I don't know. He thought it was a US movie, probably, uh, and that we choose uh, bad voices to uh, well to make the voices of the, the characters. But actually, they are French, and they are, uh, they are speaking in French. So I was happy of that comment, of that bad comment. You were talking before about the, the monster character and his background as a priest, mm -hmm. and I noticed throughout watching the movie a lot of re religious symbolism and religious connotation throughout. The character of Eva, is that named after Eve, considering in the Bible Eve is the one who gave into temptation and bit the apple? Is Eva symbolic of that character of Eve from the Bible? There is no thing that is written, you know, just for fun. Everything is, uh, I was thinking about everything, just sometimes as a... Maybe as a candy I can give to the spectator or the journalist or the bloggers. And you're right. If I choose the, the name Eva, maybe it's because she's the first, she's the first lady of my movie. Maybe she will be, maybe she's uh, the temptation of the snake in uh, the Bible. So maybe that the, um, the candies in the, my advent calendar are like the apple in uh, the Bible. Do you dare to, do you dare to eat it? Are you going to are you going to make that sin? Uh, because eating the first candy makes her a preacher. Uh, yeah, uh, no, not a preacher. Um, a sinner. A sinner. She, you know, it's it's they, they are, she's doing bad things. And yeah, of course, it's um, it's uh, there's um, a, a connection between her name and the name of Eva in the Bible, and everything in my movie is. Um, talking about religion well i mean not everything but it, uh, it's um it's an inspiration i have um i hope your i hope that people that are listening who are listening now won't hate me because i say i don't really believe in god well I'm, when i said i don't really i said I, i don't believe in god at all but i believe in god and religion uh, as um as a as a, uh, as a um as an inspiration i love mm -hmm. to write story with god and i and when i write story with god or the evil or the angel i respect them i respect that i don't said fuck them all i said okay let's pretend they do exist and let's write a story respecting that symbol you know my first movie was also talking about not god but there was an angel in the movie all along my movie there was an angel um in the room and um People ask me question of oh well you have you have to believe in God so much to uh, represent an angel like that it was beautiful your angel I love the way you represent an angel and I was so I was so um, confused to answer I'm sorry I don't believe in God not really an angel but as an author uh, I love angels because I, I I wish they do exist. And then after that, you can debate. Or maybe they do exist. They tell me, um, okay. But I respect the iconography. I respect the characters. I I respect the faith, and uh, I love to write uh, with the inspiration of um, religion. And I, I, yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I'm sorry. I, I've been long. I've been long. I've been way too long. So now, to you. <laughs> Apologies. Um, and the other thing I, I appreciate of the film is that I, I myself am a Catholic, and um, what I appreciate about the Advent calendar is that what people don't understand is that Advent isn't Christmas. Advent is something different. Advent, to a lot of people, consider it like a little version of Lent. It's a time of preparation, of sacrifice, and I think sacrifice 
yeah. is the number one theme in your movie more than anything else. Of course. Uh, she has to sacrifice, well, you know, friends, love. And in the end, she has to sacrifice maybe a, a, a miracle. Yes, of course, it's a, a question of sacrifice. But uh, just a question. In Australia, you, 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 know, uh, you have Advent calendar. Yes. And, uh, well, you, you told me that people think it's, uh, it's not a Christmas uh, object or... Well, I think people mistake it as a Christmas object, but it's not necessarily Christmas. Christmas technically begins on Christmas Eve or the morning of Christmas after like the midnight mass. That's okay. when Christmas season actually begins. Advent is the preparation to Christmas. Absolutely. And that's when people pray, pray. That's when they prepare uh, for the coming of Christ. Yeah. And I think yeah. what's, you know, what's interesting about your movie is that it's a preparation of a different kind of uh, godlike character. The miracles are there, but they're different as well. Um, you, I, you could call it a anti-Christmas movie in a sort of way, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I don't know if, if that German priest who invented the Advent calendar, I don't know if that guy invented the notion of Advent. I think it must exist before. Uh, but I know that, you know, religion are also, they have to market it. It's, they, they, it's a question of marketing. So yes. before Christmas, you have, you have to wait before Christmas. And it's everywhere I look at Advent calendar, it's, more, uh, it's always the same sentence. It's 24 surprises waiting for Christmas. So the 1st of December, it's already Christmas. I don't, I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's the, December is the month of uh, when Jesus was, was born and you're supposed to, uh, to think about it uh, December 1st. And so every day you think about Christmas and uh, well, well, I, 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 maybe, maybe, you know, in, in Europe, we, uh, we do have that notion of um, Advent calendar because uh You have Christmas market everywhere, snow everywhere, uh, Christmas ferry everywhere, and every shops, every boutique are making their own advent calendar for cut d'or with chocolate. You have teas with the house of teas. You have, uh, well, you know, perfume. You can have an advent calendar of, uh, well, let's say uh, an advent calendar with medicine. Maybe Pfizer is going to make an advent calendar. <laughs> Viagra, December 1st, <laughs> Canada. Uh, so everybody is making an advent calendar and we know that it's in Christmas. And they more or less respect that because it starts on, you know, on the object, it starts the 1st of December. So you cannot sell your fucking advent calendar in November or October. They do it with chocolate eggs. Uh, mm. For for uh, no, pack in April, I don't know what's the, the name of the, uh, of that feast, you know. But Easter, Easter, yeah, yeah. But they sell eggs, chocolates, eggs in February or January. Mm. They started too soon with the Advent calendar. You cannot cheat, so it's December first. Yes. This. So it. for everyone out there listening, the Advent calendar, December second, exclusively on Shutter. I recommend everyone watch this film. Do not wait. Watch it when it comes out and you will love it like I did. And Patrick Richemont, I thank you so very much for your time today. Congratulations with the movie. I do really do hope that we see more stories with the characters from this movie because I think it's, it's going to make a great horror franchise. I really do. And I really appreciate your time today and congratulations again for the movie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.